Welcome to the Jongets Games tutorial and playthrough for Zulywood. In this video, I'll be teaching you how to play the game as we go through the first couple of turns, and if you'd like to watch the rest of the game, you can do so by clicking the link to the extended playthrough that is down below in the description, or you can click the eye up there in the top corner. Now before we move on, I would like to ask that you please turn on the Klingon subtitles. That way, if I make any mistakes as we play, I can then put corrections on the screen and you should be able to see them. Now let's talk a little bit about what's going on in this two-player only game. Well, each player is essentially a penguin actor who is auditioning for the role of the little penguin. Now they are going to do this from a variety of scenes in the movie that is going to be filmed, and you are auditioning at the same time with your opponent. Now mechanically, what you are trying to do is steal the spotlight away from your opponent by moving your penguins around in order to lay your eggs down onto as many spots as you can out on the board. Now when you move over your opponent's eggs, they will be moved back into their area, so you're obviously trying to get as many of yours out as you can while removing theirs, and you can, on top of this, play a wide variety of events that can drastically affect your options as well as the state of the board. Now, I will explain how all of this works while we are playing, but before we jump in, I would like to ask that if you enjoy this video, that you please click the like button for it down below as well as the subscribe button for the channel. Also, if you would like to directly support the channel in the creation of future videos like this one, then please go to jongetsgames.com support. There you'll find a wide variety of things that can really help things out, and some of them come with pretty cool perks, like voting on a couple of the videos that I film each month. Alright, let's jump into the game. Out here, the game is fully set up and ready to play for our two different players. Now, I do want to mention that this is a prototype version of the game, so the art and components are not necessarily what you'll find in the final version, and I also want to mention that I am filming today with some enhanced components that are not necessarily going to be in the basic version of the game. All right, let's now set the scene and briefly talk about what's going on in this movie, where we have two different competing penguin actors vying for the role of the little penguin in the upcoming filming of this movie. Now, we are going to be simultaneously auditioning in the second scene of the movie, but before we talk about thematically what's going on here, we need to know what happened in the first scene. Now, it says a famine is approaching and the penguin colony's food supply is running low. The colony leader asks the little penguin to help find them a new home. So the little penguin and his best friend, the seagull, set out on an adventure. Now that scene already happened, so now we come to scene two, which is what we are playing today, and that one's called the Great Icebergs. Now it says icebergs block the little penguin's path, but the seagull flies up high for a bird's eye view to help find the way through. Now as you can see on the back of these scene cards, we have the setup for the specific scene that we are auditioning for. So in scene one, there were no icebergs, and down below it also tells us which event cards we are playing with. Now in scene two, we have a slightly different mix, and as you can see, there are these icebergs placed out around the board. So we now know thematically what's going on with this scene, and now let's talk briefly about what our objective is. Now we are playing as the blue penguin actor right over here, and we are trying to steal the spotlight away from the tan penguin, who is our opponent. Now the way we are going to do that as we simultaneously act out this scene is we are going to be laying eggs around the board and moving around the board to explore different spots and lay even more eggs down. Now we are going to win the game if we are able to get all 16 of our eggs down onto the board at any one moment, or if we are able to set the board up so that our opponent has no legal moves. In either of those cases, we will have successfully stolen the spotlight from our opponent and won the role of the little penguin. Well, I think it's now time to start playing the game, and we are going to be the starting player, which means we can take the first turn. Now, on a player's turn, they are going to take a single action from three different options. Now, I think what we want to do for our first turn is to hatch this egg right here. Now, that is how we can get these penguins down onto the board, and you simply replace an egg with a penguin, and then you put the egg back into your supply. Once the new penguin is hatched, we can then draw two of these event cards and keep one of them and put the other one back on top of the deck or down to the bottom of the deck. So these are the two options available to us, and I do want to mention that you can play these event cards whenever you do one of the other two actions in the game. When you do a hatch action like we did, you gain a new event card, but you cannot play one. Now let's look at the details of these two cards, and the first one is called Stunt Double. Now it says that you can swap the position of one of your penguins on the board with an enemy penguin on the board. The other one is contract negotiation, and it says you can secretly put an unused penguin in one hand and an unused egg in the other. Your opponent chooses a hand. Place the chosen egg or penguin onto an empty space of the board. 
Now, this effectively means we have a 50-50 chance of putting a penguin out, which is pretty great, and swapping the position with an opposing penguin can be good, but I think I like the option of this one a little bit better. So we are going to return this to the deck, and it's going to go to the top or the bottom, and I figure we will put it down to the bottom of the deck. All right, we are done with our turn, so that means our opponent can go, and just like us, they can take a single action from three options. Now, if they wanted to, they could hatch this egg just like we did, but instead, they are going to do another action option, which is called landing. Now, the way this works is they take one of their eggs from the supply, and they put it down onto an empty spot on the board. Now, these spots of the board are the intersection points between these triangles, as you can see out here, and they have decided to put this one onto that point right over there. Now, as I said before, whenever you do an action that is not hatching a penguin, you can spend up to one of your event cards either before or after your main action. So they've completed their main action, and our opponent now decides to play this event card. Now, this one is Call for Extras, and it says they can choose a triangle area surrounded by three empty spaces. They can place up to two of their unused eggs and one unused enemy egg on those spaces. Now the triangle areas are these small triangles out here on the board, and it looks like our opponent wants to put these eggs down surrounding this triangle here. Now they have to take one of our eggs as well, and they're going to put their eggs just like this, and our egg will go over there, and that has finished out using this event card. Now this does not go into a discard pile, instead this is removed from the game, and our opponent is now done with their turn. This means it's our turn to go again, and for our action, I think let's do the third option, which involves exploring with a penguin. Now before or after this action, we could spend one of our event cards, but I think we are going to hold onto them for a time when they might be more beneficial to us. This means we can take our action, and whenever you explore, you are going to take one of your penguins, and you are going to send them out in a direction away from where they are. Now this map is very slippery, so as they go, they are going to keep moving until they run into a barrier. Now the barriers out here are going to be the icebergs as well as the seagull, and any penguins or eggs of your color are counted as barriers. So in this case, I think we should head down over here, and that means the penguins can head right over there, and I did not say that the edges are barriers, and that's because the penguin is going to fall off the edge, and then swim in a straight line underneath the map, and then pop out on the other side. Now, I also didn't say that the opposing eggs are barriers, and that's because whenever your penguin goes onto a spot with an opposing egg, that will simply remove the egg from the board, and the penguin can continue moving until they hit a barrier. Now, in this case, our penguin has hit a barrier, which is this iceberg, so they now have to stop. Once the exploring penguin has stopped moving, we now can add eggs onto the board onto every spot that that penguin explored through, including the location where that penguin started. Well, that's finished out our explore action, but before we move on, I'd like to discuss the two illegal explore options that we are not allowed to do out here on the board. Now, the first of these involves moving in such a way that you never actually hit a barrier. For instance, on our next turn, we could try to move over here, which would fall us off the edge, bring us back over here, and we would keep going infinitely, which is obviously an illegal move. Now, the second illegal move involves moving so that you move right into an opposing penguin. For instance, if we had a penguin here and this was over there, then we would not be allowed to move in this direction because that would cause a fight on set and the director of this film does not want to see that in any auditions. Now the final thing I'd like to mention involves the special rules for the seagull. Now it acts as a barrier just like the icebergs, but whenever a player does an explore action that goes through any of the adjacent spots to the seagull, then after that action is done, the seagull will lift up, fly around, and land down onto an empty spot on the board of the active player's choice. Well, at this point, I think we are done with our turn, because we are done with our action, and I decided not to spend any of these event cards. This means it is now our opponent's turn, but I think I'm going to save that for the extended playthrough. Now at this point, I believe I've taught you most of the rules to the game, so that is going to bring this tutorial to a close. Now if you'd like to watch the rest of the playthrough all the way to the end, where we flood this board with penguins and eggs, then you can do so by clicking the link to the extended playthrough that is down below in the description, or you can click the I up there in the top right corner, and I hope you've enjoyed learning how to play Zulywood. As always, I'd like to thank everyone who's been supporting this channel, including all of these producer-level Patreon backers. If you too would like to directly support the channel and the creation of videos like this one, then please go to johngetsgames.com support to see a variety of ways with which you can do that. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please click the like button down below as well as the subscribe button for the channel. Thanks for watching.